incredibly awful. But I read about uh, a guy this week that had a big secret, and he lived two separate lives, and he, uh, he had two wives, he had two houses, two sets of kids, two different states. Yeah, sounds, sounds wild, right? I can't, I can't even imagine like how you would conduct yourself. How do you, how do you even operate like that? I mean, first off, like what do you say to the one family like, oh honey, I'm going on a business trip again for the third time this month. Or, you know, honey, I'm home. Sorry, I went out to go get, you know, bread at the store and I got lost for two days. <laughs> I don't know, man. Secrets, double life, right? So, in California, there was a professor who would um, teach at his, you know, local university. And um, <laughs> he was a philosophy teacher, but during the day, and then at night, he was a, uh, a motorcycling methamphetamine dealer. Okay? Now wanted on, on drug charges. And secrets, man. Double lives. So secrets, man. What is, what is your secret? What is your secret? You might have or a story that's completely not alike this motorcycling methamphetamine dealer or, you know, uh, husband times two, father times two, house owner times two, whatever you want to call it. But in some ways, we all live a double life. We all have secrets. So there's this app that came out on the iPhone a while back. Um, some of you might remember it was released like two years ago. It was called the Post Secret app. Um, and they recently took it down uh, off of the, the app market because of legal violations, because it was, it was basically, you know, people were confessing that they had criminal activity, whether it was like, uh, you know, I drank and drive and I hit my neighbor's mailbox. It's a criminal offense, you know? So some things on there were, you know, confessions and they were, you know, good for people to get off their mind, but um, they were criminal issues, so it was taken down. But... Um, I got to look at kind of like a stored cache of some of those secrets online, and I'm going to be sharing some of those with you tonight. But the explanation from iTunes that I searched up online um, that explains what the app is or why it's there, it says this, it says, sharing a secret and connecting with someone that has a similar secret provides a cathartic release for people to overcome loneliness. While the Post Secret app allows secret sharers to connect, they are doing so in a safe, anonymous, and protected environment where no personal information is exchanged. Okay, so cathartic just basically means like a matter of emotions or the heart. Um, we talked last week about the heart, right? In flow, you guys talked about that. In here, the source, we talked about issues dealing with the heart. So cathartic just basically means like the emotions of your heart, okay? So it's an emotional release. So this was cool technology, right? This app, you know, allowed people to share these secrets, but um, it really didn't provide anything after that. It was just kind of a release for them, but there was no help after the fact. So these are some of the secrets that, that I looked through, and I just pulled a few of them tonight. I'm going to read you them tonight just to kind of whet our appetite for what we're going to talk about tonight. Here's number one. When I'm alone, I start thinking of you. I fear I might be alone forever. Number two. I hate being the boss at my job. I would give anything to not be in charge anymore. I just tell you my disorder. This is number three. I just tell you my disorder is in control, so you'll stop asking me. Number four. I haven't ate anything but salad for three months because you called me fat. Number five, my parents are very religious. I just can't find it in me to tell them that I'm an atheist. Number six, I try my hardest to keep you from meeting my best friend. 
She's funnier and prettier than me. Why don't we share our secrets? Tonight I have a couple different points and then we're going to get into the word because, you know, in the words of Billy Graham, it's not, you know, God doesn't honor my thoughts, he honors his word, right? So however I'm going to present this whole issue about secrets, it's not just my ideas that's going to help you out. It's ultimately the, the word of God that's going to back up some truth that I'm saying, okay? It doesn't come from me, okay? We're going to pull it from Scripture because that's how we need to organize our lives and deal with these issues. It doesn't, you can't go into a, a self-help place and figure out all your issues. You need the word of God to change who you are, right? To do that work in your heart. So why don't we share our secrets, right? Well, obviously because our secrets might be embarrassing. Um, there are a few obvious reasons. One, because they're potentially embarrassing for us or for our family. They would hurt the image we're working so hard to keep up. Um, if you're a guy and you say that you like Twilight, right? Everybody would like crucify you, <laughs> right? Um, number two, right? Our, se our secrets might get us in trouble, right? Our secrets might get us in trouble. Um, I read quite a few secrets that talked about people um, losing their virginity, and um, but they haven't told anybody. Um, their friends think they're a virgin, their parents have no clue. Um, and it's understandable why you would want to keep something like that to yourself. Um, because you would obviously take some heat for making that decision. So, back in middle school, um, I'm pretty sure it was in seventh grade, uh, I got in trouble for cheating on a test. Okay, and it was the stupidest thing for me to cheat on, okay, because I cheated on a Bible verse. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Terrible, right? Um, since I went to LCA, okay, Life Center Academy, which is the private school that this, this church runs, I um, was born and raised here. Since we were a private Christian school, we were required to take Bible classes. Um, as a part of our normal curriculum, and we had to memorize scripture. You guys still do that, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Still have Bible class, memory verses. Okay, well, this was like the, the cumulative one. Like every week you have like a memory verse, and then it like tracks down, and you got to memorize the whole passage. Okay, you guys don't do it anymore? You guys have it easy. <laughs> you remember that, Felicia? Yes. Yes. I can just see Ryan, you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. David, right? Hey, John, just David, answer the prayer right there. We prayed for you last week, brother. We're in the last Nobody can tell me that God isn't real because there's a living example right there. Right. right. Amen. I mean, he was on his deathbed. Um, David, you too, brother. Nobody can tell you God ain't real. You know it, for sure. We pray for both of them. God has miraculously touched their lives, brought them back from the grave. Literally, God is real. Um, but back to my stupidity. Okay, um, so it was like the cumulative passage, and um, I totally forgot to study for it. Um, and I thought I would be able to get away with it because I'm like, you know, I could probably remember it, and I was just... I just didn't remember it, so I was like, okay, I, my friend told me that we had a memory verse, he was like, yo, did you study for it? I'm like, oh crap, no, I didn't. So, I had the smart idea that I would write the um, scripture passage out ahead of time and just switch my test. Mm. Okay, so, I had it at my desk, and um, when it came time for the test, you know, I, uh, you know, switched my paper and then handed in my paper, teacher collects them. And um, <laughs> he calls me back in later to his, his room, and he's like, hey, uh, Matt, i got to talk to you about something. Okay. So I'm like, all right. Um, what is it? He's like, oh, uh, did you uh, cheat on your test? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so now I haven't only cheated, I've lied. Uh, so I'm like, no, why? He's like, well, because uh, you wrote down the wrong scripture verse. <laughs> okay. 
And uh, he was like, you, you've had a hundred, okay, so far in this class, all right? And this is one of the reasons why I justified my cheating, all right, hear me out, is because obviously I'm the pastor's son. Um, I've had a hundred in the class so far. Like, I couldn't miss another one. Um, if I miss that, like, I wouldn't be the perfect, you know, Christian kid, pastor's son. That's where the devil gets you. Okay, he used me trying to uphold my image, right? Trying to uphold my image. <laughs> and in my stupidity, I copied down the wrong scripture verse. But lesson learned, you know, I had to copy down the whole book of the Bible to make up for that. Wow. Learned my lesson, though, for sure. <laughs> So, sometimes our secrets get us in trouble, right? Sometimes our secrets bring us shame. Secrets usually have shame and regret attached to them. It's kind of like a package deal. Um, not always. You know, they don't always include shame. Like, sometimes if you're planning a surprise party, you're like, oh, keep this a secret. It's not, like, shameful to have that secret. <laughs> um, I also have another confession to make. Here it is. Um, this is my confession. Sometimes I wish that people at Chick-fil-A weren't Christians, so they were open on Sundays. Um, uh, in fact, I had Chick-fil-A before I came here, so. I believe that like in heaven, at like the marriage supper of the Lamb, it's gonna be Chick-fil-A. Big party platters that never run out. Chick-fil-A sauce. And that Chick-fil-A sauce. What? Has anybody not tried Chick-fil-A sauce? Has anybody else not tried Chick-fil-A? Are you real? What? Chick-fil-A is my line. What happened? So, <laughs> bringing, bringing, that, bringing that darkness, right, into the light could bring shame on you, on your family, on your friends. Um, it could also bring shame onto Jesus, right, because we call ourselves right. Christians, um, and to ourselves, obviously. So we believe that keeping the shame inside is the best way to protect ourselves. Also, our secrets are often painful to, like, relive and to rehash and to bring up. Um, sometimes we think that the secret part of our life is like over. Like, I did that a long time ago. Um, it's done with. I'm not doing it anymore. Um, so it's not affecting me anymore. False. Okay? We bury that secret deep within us and we put it under a lock and key um, so nobody finds out. But that's the problem. It's like a parasite that lives in us. Um, it's like a sickness that we have. That's why tonight's message is called Secrets Make Us Sick. So we're going to get into the word very quickly here, but I want to do like an exercise here, and I want everybody to just be as honest as possible. But this is like the judgment-free zone, right? Planet Fitness's slogan, which I think is ridiculous. Fire. They give out free pizza at the gym. I don't understand. That. How does that? How does that coincide? I don't know. What's that? <laughs> unless you're unless you're bulking, right? Bulky free. So let's let's do this exercise tonight together. Let's, like I said, no judgment. Let's let's be let's be civil. Okay. Um, Listen to these words that I'm about to say. Um, lying, cheating, stealing, uh, drug addiction, drug use, alcohol, sexual addiction, depression, self-harm. Um, what else have depression, uh, self-harm, living some sort of double life. Okay, I want you to be honest, right? How many of you would be willing to raise your hand and say, yeah, Matt, at least one of those I dealt with? Look around, just look around. Okay, my hand is up too. You are not alone. Uh, you put your hands down. You are not alone. We all have secrets. Like I said, if my secrets were up there, I'd probably pass out and die. <laughs> right? I just told you one of them, like, awful. All right? 
So, you see, the, the shame, right, the pain, the trouble, the embarrassment, all these are legitimate reasons for, for keeping your secrets, so we think. But I'm not here to tell you that it's going to be easy talking about the subject dealing with secrets. But I'm here to tell you that there is a better way to live. All right, and that's why we're going to get into the Word of God, because it's important. So secrets make us sick inside. Our secrets keep us living a lie. And our secrets actually teach us that truth isn't important. All right? So admitting that you have a secret to somebody who is trustworthy and can help you out, all right, is probably the best healthy first step that you can take. I put the clause in there, and can help you out, in there for a reason. Because if you just tell somebody your secret, that just means somebody else knows your secret. It could potentially get you in trouble, and now them, or maybe just cause problems that could backfire on you. Maybe you think this person is trustworthy and then they stab you in the back, right? Come on, we're talking about real life. So these are things we need to know about secrets, right? It's universal, right? We all have secrets. We're all really good at looking okay on the outside. We're taught to do that at an early age, okay? We're taught to do that by culture, by our families, you know, keep it in the family, don't let anybody know. I call it image management. <laughs> we love the mirror, right, to look at ourselves and make sure we're ready for the public appearance, right? We get ready for school in the morning, make sure our hair is done, everything. But when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Maybe you see more than just your reflection. Maybe you see like this haunting image of your secrets behind you. And you're afraid that somehow they're going to come out to lie. Or maybe you're just like gripped by the fear of them even being in your life. Like you can't even function like a normal person. But you bury them once again when you walk out the door. You're ready to head out for the day and act like nothing is wrong. See, our struggles may be different, but we're all carrying a secret. See, in Jesus' time, the religious people, right, the Christians of the day, they were experts, okay? They were experts in mastering this double life or this image management thing. Um, they were masters at pretending like they didn't have any problems, and Jesus was very, very, very specific on how to deal with this. So we're going to look at Scripture tonight. If we can turn to the first passage of Matthew, chapter 23, we're going to read 27 and 28. I'm reading from the NLT for this passage. What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, exclamation point. For you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly you look like righteous people, but inwardly your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. Let's go back to 27. It says, For you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones. So can you put up those two um, images really quick? You might see, have seen these images uh, on the social media feeds, uh, on Facebook. I made them to kind of give you an idea of what I feel like secrets do to us. And I'm not talking about gossip necessarily, even though that has a part to play in this. I'm not talking about gossip tonight. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about the dead bones in us. Okay? You can see, like, the girl is fine. She's acting like everything's great. But on the inside, it's like death. Right? But this is what secrets are. They're a sickness. They make us sick. So I like the way that the message actually states this passage. I'll just read it. It won't be up on the screen. Um, it says, you're hopeless, you religion, scholars, and Pharisees, frauds. You're like manicured grave plots, grass clipped and the flowers bright, but six feet down, it's all rotting bones and worm-eaten flesh. People look at you and think you're saints, but beneath your skin, you're total frauds. Mm. 
Everyone has a secret. Everyone is a fraud in some way. We can act like everything is cool, but I guarantee you, if we evaluate our lives, we look at the fraudulence in our own lives. Right. Christ was specific about that too. He said, before you judge anybody else, get the dang two by four out of your eye before you remove the speck of sawdust in somebody else's. It's nonsense. Stop the gossip, stop the judgment. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't belong in the kingdom of God. Right, right. See, everyone has a, th a secret. I think it's time that we quit pretending like we don't and start admitting yeah, here's why. Because secrets are tough to carry long term. Mm. Amen. Right. That's right. It's like carrying around a weight every day. Mm -hmm. Weight never goes away. You never get any stronger in carrying it. You just get better at covering up the effects of it on your life. Right. The weight of it never changes in your life. You can brush it aside, but it's still attached to you like a ball and chain. See, because secrets are destructive. This is my second point. Now, our secrets destroy us from the inside out. You're hanging out with your friends and, you know, a topic comes up and you're scared out of your mind because when they start talking about that topic, you're afraid somebody's going to know what you did. You start shaking on the inside. You're like, please let this conversation pass. Or you try to change this, the topic. Mm -hmm. You think that somehow they might know and... You second guess yourself and you're sure that your mind just might be playing tricks on you. Like, no, they can't know. Well, they don't know anything. I gotta change the subject. See, no one knows your secret and you carry it around that burden every day and the pit of your stomach feels so empty, you're paranoid, you're gonna be what? Found out. So that's the that's the that's the you know scary part of secrets, right? Being found out. The problem isn't that we have issues, okay? <laughs> we all got issues, let's be real. We're all broken, there's no surprise in that. The problem is that we choose to stay that way. See, many of us choose to suffer alone in this, like we bear the weight of our secret by ourselves. But that's not the way that Jesus wanted us to live. That's what brings us to our next passage of scripture. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, I'm going to read from the NIV. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I talked about the weight of this secret, right? You've got to deal with it. You've got to drag it around all the time. You've got to keep it with you every day. But here is Jesus saying, look, there's a different way to deal with this. You don't got to carry that nonsense. Come talk to me about it. You see, the, the thing is this, is that I can hide all my secrets from you. But God sees right through that. We don't fool him. In fact, he's looking at us like, why are you carrying this weight? Do you like this way of life? Come to me. Drop this burden, uh, drop this secret at my feet, and I'll give you rest. Because I know that in my life, the secrets that I've dealt with... That I've tried to keep hidden. Long term, I, I finally got to come to a point where I can give them to God and say, all right, God, I, I've acted like for, you know, two months of this thing isn't in me. But here it is. I'm going to be honest with you as if you could be honest with God. He sees your heart. But give it over to God. Find rest tonight. See, everyone has a secret. Secrets are heavy and they require constant management to avoid being discovered. Jesus understands what's going on. He knows the burdens that you face. That's why he wants you to come in and find rest. He's saying that there is hope tonight. So number three, hope. On the reciprocal side of Secrets, right? We think that there's only being found out. But when you be found out by God, when you be found out by Jesus, there's a different story. When you're found out by man, there's judgment, right? Hate, anger, 
jealousy, whatever you want to call it, all these bad emotions. But when you get found out by Jesus, something's different. And here it is. This is what brings us to our last scripture passage. Hebrews 4.16. Let us then approach the throne of grace. Here's the great part. With confidence, so that we may receive blood, mercy, and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see, Jesus claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life. He wants us to give, or he wants to give us a life of these things. He wants to give us a life free from secrets and free from the burdens of living a double life. See, throughout Scripture, he calls us his people, right? His children. And like a loving, a perfect loving father, right? He wants to give us freedom and forgiveness from this pain. See, Jesus specializes in forgiveness. That's what he does. That's why he came. But here's the great part about these secrets that we carry. With Jesus, there's no judgment. There's only rest and grace and peace and mercy. You see, here's the crazy part. You have no secrets with God. He knows your heart. He knows your secrets. He knows that you're desperately trying to look good on the outside. But he sees deep into your heart. And what's awesome about the verse before this, I don't know if we can get that right, maybe verse 15. I just thought about this. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Look, God knows what it's like to walk through these things. Right? The high priest that we're talking about is Jesus. Right? Paul is saying that Jesus was tempted every way that we were. Right? You know, sexual things, jealousy, gossip, anger, all these things. He was a normal person. Or he was a human being that walked this earth. <clears throat> he wore real flesh. He had real emotions. But Jesus understands because he was tempted in the same way as we were. So talk to God about this tonight. Maybe talk to one of our leaders here at the source. Even at the end of the service, we're going to close very quickly here. I want to take a minute and pray, and um, if I could have the worship team come back up. We're going to sing the anthem again. I think it's fitting for tonight. When we sing this last song, before we close, I want you to surrender your your hearts again to God and look at God through the eyes of, of Christ because Christ is going to offer you mercy Christ is going to offer you grace because tonight I want you to confess your secrets not to me not like a Catholic confession where you go to the priest and tell him what you've done we're going to go straight to the high priest we're going to go straight to Christ. We're going to get what we need from Him. We're going to get mercy from Him. We're going to get grace from Him. We're going to get restoration from Him. We're going to get peace and, and rest. Tonight, I want you guys to walk out and leave some of this baggage behind. Right? Leave some weights at this altar. Get rid of all the weights. You don't have to walk in here bearing any shame anymore. Tonight you can leave this place and say, you know what? My secrets are going to stay buried at the feet of Christ. I'm never going to dig them up. You see, the devil has a great job of reminding people of their past. It's his job. In Scripture, it calls Satan the accuser. 
right? He's going to bring up your past and say, you did this, and you did that, and you did this and that. And God's going to be like, that's all right. She's forgiven. It's okay. My son, he died to cover all that nonsense. He's going to say, well, what about when she did this, God? What about when he said that? Jesus is like, it doesn't matter. They asked for forgiveness. I gave them rest. I gave them grace and mercy. Don't let the devil accuse you any longer. Drop this baggage off tonight. Let this be the end for some of your, your secrets here tonight. But maybe you're on the opposite you know, side of this fence and you're saying, well, you know, I don't really have a, you know, relationship with Christ in the first place. Let it start tonight. There's no better way to start off a relationship by than just laying everything bare, right? Nobody wants to go into a relationship and find out later on that the person is a different person. I've went through that. You don't have to do that tonight. Look, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come to his throne tonight. Drop your baggage off. Leave it there. Don't pick it back up. Just want to do two things tonight. If you could all stand with me. We're going to... We're going to close very quickly here. But, um... source, this church, the leaders of this place, we're here not to, you know, be just over your head. We are here to work with you through your problems. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're called to do. And scripture says we're supposed to bear each other's burdens. So as leaders tonight, if we can have our leaders just come forward, if you're a leader in the source, in the flow, Kind of walk forward. We're going to make ourselves available to you guys for prayer. And uh, but we're going to sing this, this song, the anthem, and we're going to release ourselves from the guilt and the shame of our secrets because we're going to declare tonight that God has won the victory over whatever secret that we've had, whatever nonsense that's been in our life. We're not going to let it affect us any longer. Tonight it's going to change. So as the band begins to play and worship team, you can step forward. I want to show you one thing before our time is out. If you can put up that website right there. This website is called Remedy Live. And um, on this website, you can actually go on here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can talk to somebody, a Christian, okay, a person who's got godly character, about any issue in your life that you're dealing with. Maybe you're dealing with depression. Maybe you've got a secret on your chest you need help with. You can go on this website and talk to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Maybe you're struggling with your faith and you need some encouragement. Maybe you did something you know you shouldn't have and you need to get it off your chest and you need to, to talk with somebody. And John says this, he says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. we got to admit that we're messed up people. That's the first step. But after that comes grace and mercy and peace. All these things can be found in Christ. We don't have to be afraid any longer. Tonight it can change for you. You can leave this place 